The key to accuracy in any firearm is a good crown of the barrel. The basic principle of a good crown is that all of the gases surrounding the bullet and behind it escape the riflings at the same exact time. When shortening the barrel of any firearm, it is recommended that the firearm be taken to a qualified gunsmith to perform the work. However, in this video, I'll be showing you that you can achieve good results by doing this job yourself using basic hand tools. Follow along and I'll demonstrate exactly how I perform this task. I'll show you the tools needed, the parts needed, what's to be expected, and the accuracy results along the way. Before we get started, click the screen for the video playing or check out the link in the description box below where I show you the accuracy of a barrel that has been chopped off in the field without a crown. Tools needed for this job involve a hacksaw with a high carbon steel blade as well as a bastard file. You will be needing a drill gun, a piece of board, fine steel wool, 400 grit sandpaper as well as 150 grit sandpaper. You'll also be needing valve grinding compound. The caliber of the barrel that you're recrowning will determine the size of the hardware. What you see in front of you is for 223. Disassemble the firearm, determine the mark to cut, and place the firearm into a vise. A vise is not needed, but it is definitely helpful. Once you have the barrel cut, it's time to start filing. Take a good look at the barrel and take note of any angle that you may have created when cutting the barrel. Without the proper machine, there is no real way to true the face of the barrel. At this point, you're just using your best judgment to level it off with a file. Pause once in a while and take a look at the low spots in the barrel. Continue to file the barrel until all of the marks are uniform. Once the barrel face appears to be uniform, ensure that the barrel is straight with no angle. View the barrel from different angles along the way until the barrel appears to be level and clean. Using a piece of board and a 150 grain sandpaper, continue to block sand the barrel. This process is used to refine your finish on the face of the barrel. You will repeat this step with 400 grit sandpaper. Rotate the barrel along the way and continue to sand against the rim of the barrel to bring down the edge from the cut. Once you've taken the edge off of the rim and smoothed off the face of the barrel, switch to 400 grit sandpaper and continue to hand sand. Progressing from 400 grit sandpaper to 800 grit sandpaper will yield better results. Once you've finished sanding, taping fine steel wool to a drill gun will allow you to buff the face of the barrel. Once you've achieved a desired finished look, it's time to start the recrown. You can see here I cut the head from a machine screw and attached a cap nut. These parts will vary depending on the caliber. You will also be using your valve grinding compound. Insert the machine screw and cap into the drill gun and add valve grinding compound to both the cap and the barrel. This method effectively creates a crown into the barrel. As you go, stop every 15 seconds or so, adding more valve grinding compound each time. It's a good idea to stop and roll the barrel once in a while. This will help to keep the crown uniform along the way. This is about the effect that you're looking for right here. It's not necessary to go any deeper than what you see this crown here. Once you've created the crown to your liking, tape steel wool to your drill gun and buff the crown. Once you've finished, it is extremely important to clean the bore of the barrel at least three to four times, removing all remnants of steel wool and valve grinding compound. Okay, so the crown looks good. Well, let's see how well it shoots. Using 55 grain Perfecta ammo, I set up at 35 yards for the initial test. I set up again at 50 yards at a fairly unstable platform, but it was all I had at that area. I'm also using a 4x32 scope. Okay, so here was the first initial uh, 35 yards, five shots. And then this was the uh, 50 yards, five shots. You can see the grouping spread out a little more. And I took another four shots 
off camera there just to kind of square things away. And you can see that's a pretty good at 35 yards, spreading out just a little bit at 50 yards. So what it appears to be is bullseye would be 35 yards. Uh, this first ring right here would be 50 yards. And I would assume this ring right here would probably be uh, 100 yard grouping. And of course, probably spreading out from there, 300 yards. So not too bad, but uh, especially for just a garage cut down and recrown. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, feel free to give me a little like down there. Feel free to share, comment, any questions you might have. I'll do my best to try to answer them. If you're looking for some 100 yard shots with this rifle, uh, check back later on when I have access to that range. As you can probably tell here, I'm really happy with how compact this rifle is. And uh, before I go, I just want to make sure you guys know that it is always highly recommended that you take your firearms to a qualified gunsmith to perform the work. But for the do-it-yourselfers out there, I hope this video helped you out, and we'll catch you guys next time.